It's been a good week for mining stocks, especially silver producers with the metal trading near 11-month highs. But is it still a good time to get into the mining space or should investors wait on the sidelines? Joining us now is famed newsletter writer and geologist Brett Cook. Brett, thanks so much for, for being in studio with us. Oh, it's great to be here, especially across the street from this wall, the uh, stock exchange. Uh, absolutely. Some really good energy. And now, the mm. last time we spoke was March. And mining stocks were doing quite well. Still the story here today in April. Um, is it too late to get into the game for investors here? Yes and no. I, I still expect by year end gold and silver prices to be higher. I think the past couple of weeks we've seen a bit of, a uh, bit too much uh, jumping into it. I mean, we've seen gold's up, what, 2%, yet the GDXJ, which is the junior index, is up, what was it, 17%? Uh, yeah, over 17%. And a lot of the stocks that I watch and don't actually own, uh, what they were calling optionality plays, they're up 30 plus percent over this time frame. And these optionality plays are really uh, buying into projects that are probably never economic or certainly not or marginal uh, on the theory that someone more foolish than yourself is going to buy it off you. I don't think that's the way to play it. I think wait, wait, for, your, wait for the point. Uh, there are going to be better opportunities and buy quality. Well, it seems like we said offline that this cycle seems to be repeating itself here with the run-up in mining stocks. So what are the lessons learned? What should we be doing differently this time around? All right. Well, four months ago, it was a very depressing space, right? And people were talking about companies uh, cutting back on expiration, capital expenditures, cutting costs here and there. The industry itself wrote off something like $51 billion in bad assets, bad deposits, optionality plays, if you will. Um, I think the lesson I hope that the major mining companies have learned anyway is to stick with quality, buy quality deposits, and, and ignore the, uh, the marginal and economic ones. What I hope that's the case anyway. What about the junior mining space? Is it still a, a risky play here? The GDXJ up, you know, what is it, uh, you know, over 78% since the start of the year. It's insane numbers here. It certainly is. Um, a lot of companies that didn't have anything to start with but most past year still don't have anything but moose pasture, but their stocks are up 20, 30, 40% just because, you know, all this money started to come into it, all this speculative money. I still focus on that sector. I think that's really the place to be uh, for the big gains, ultimately. Uh, we'll see that play out over the next couple of years. But I only want to own companies with solid management that have the cash to do some real exploration, the intelligence to know what a good deposit looks like and when it doesn't look good and a good chance at making a discovery. I mean, that's what really, really uh, How many helps. are out there? I would say out of the, I don't know, there's probably a thousand companies exploring right now, listed in Canada, probably 20% have got something potentially legitimate, 10% are worth owning. <laughs> All right. pretty, that's pretty, my, that's my there, Brett, that's but my opinion. Well, let's look at the metals specifically here. Uh, silver really catching up to gold. Is silver a good play for you right now? I, to me, silver is the poor man's gold, and why would you want to own you know, the second best? Uh, I stick to gold. Uh, to me, I like silver companies or silver deposits, but only if they're, again, highly economic and, and, and make sense. I mean, I don't care what metal it is. If I can find a deposit whose production costs are in the lowest third or quartile of the industry costs, that deposit will make money no matter what. So what are your thoughts on gold then? Where do you see it headed? I think end of year it goes higher, uh, for sure. I mean, this, what changed my mind back in November in my letter, I, you know, I came out and said, this is, you know, it's time to start buying. And what really triggered it was just something really simple, at least to me, is that we're looking at negative interest rates around most of the world, potentially hitting that in the U.S. At that point, gold actually makes sense as an intelligent investment to people across the street at, at the New York Stock Exchange, which is a big difference to what it's been up until then. Brad, thanks so much for stopping by the studio. Thank you. Brad Cook, Exploration Insights. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.